What's good, people? Oh. <laughs> we, we, we definitely live. We've been live for a couple minutes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, so welcome to the first ever Rants and Gems live stream. Exactly. Now, you notice our first one because we didn't even know we was live. Sorry. Right? Sorry, you guys. <laughs> so, you, look. You didn't catch much. We didn't miss much. You didn't miss much. All right. So, we sitting here making sure everything do what it do. And you guys caught us and didn't even tell us that we were live. So, thank you very much. But, um, yeah, welcome, Rants and Gems. Real Estate Podcast. I'm Matt Garland, NMLS number 58700, better known as MG the Mortgage Guy. And I am Kiana Watson, broker extraordinaire, license number 317576. <laughs> they said we've been live for 10 minutes. Oh, man, <laughs> <about everything. laughs> it's all It's all good, y'all. So y'all heard a lot, all right? <laughs> so look, it is what it is. We back live stream, and we're going to have um, an interesting conversation today. We're going to talk about um, renting versus owning. And, um, yeah. you know, there's always a lot of topics. We're in the real estate industry. Obviously, oh, yeah. people knows that. Um, obviously, people are going to say we're biased. Um, They're going to say we're biased. You, you're gonna, but you'll be surprised to hear our opinions about renting versus buying. It's, a, it's, a, it's many ways to skin a cat. It is definitely many ways to skin a cat. Right. First and foremost, let me say the disclaimer. Fuck our opinions, first and foremost. True. Do what works for you and your family at the end of the day. Forget the gurus, forget this person, forget your mom, dad, your uncle. Who cares at the end of the day? Do what works best for you and your family at the end of the day. All right? So that's my disclaimer. All now, right. let's get to it. Um, rent versus owning. What is your opinion on this? My opinion about rent versus owning is you have to own to control. There's just no way you can control the narrative of anything being a renter. There's just, I mean, bottom line is, you want to build generational wealth, you forget the generation. You know what, if you want to build equity, build wealth, period, if you want to be in control of your life, you need to own it. And owning means owning your real estate. Like, let's be honest, when people are ready to, you're renting at any time, they can say, you know what, I'm tired of you renting, you got 60 days, get out of my property. Damn, that's harsh. But it's true, and it's on, your, it's on most lease agreements as well, and I don't think anybody pays attention to that. When you read your lease agreement, there's clauses. There are clauses that say when they're ready to sell the property, they have to give you a certain amount of notice mm -hmm. to get out. So now your family's displaced. They're selling their property or taking over or doing whatever they want to do. It's just like, why, why wouldn't you want to own? Why wouldn't you want to own where you lie your head? I don't get that. Like, I truly don't understand it. Even if it comes from a non-real estate standpoint, like if I was, even if I'm not getting paid, mm -hmm. I still would advocate for you to own where you lay your head. It just doesn't make any sense. I agree with that. You know? You know, look, I'm I'm a fan of what's the alternative, right? You can really be homeless. So if you got to rent and if you're in a situation where you can't afford to buy real estate right. or you're not ready for that type of responsibility of owning real estate, then go ahead and rent, right? I don't think there's nothing wrong with that. You okay. need a place to sleep. You need a place True. to lay your head because who wants to live on a street? Correct. Right? So what's your alternative? It's either you rent or you go be homeless, like for real, for real. Facts. Right? But I will say this. We have to own some shit. At the, at like the, the great the Aisha said. Like the great Aisha Selden says, some. we have to own some shit, especially in the black and brown community. Yes. I don't get... Now, I understand why folks will say, um, I'll rent and then I'll invest. Right? I've seen that too. I get that. Now, everybody always like to throw Grant Cardone into that conversation, oh especially my on my page, because I posted something the other day. I'm starting early, y'all. <laughs> you got the wine early? I love it. But, like, I posted on my page something, and we're going to get into that later. Yeah. But, you know, everybody's throwing um, GC name in it. Well, he's a billionaire. He rents and this, that, and the third. And I'm like, look, that's different, right? He's investing. Listen, listen, he's still owning. Can I say that? That's mm -hmm. so different. I feel like what we do, we want to hear pieces that we want to hear to actually support the narrative that we want. Because a lot of us are in a position to buy. We can afford to buy, but we like the shiny thing. The shiny thing is I can rent. And honestly, to be quite honest, renting is cheaper up front than it is buying. That's buying a is a down payment. It's closing costs. Mm -hmm. It's all these things. But renting is like first month's rent, first and second month's rent, or first and last month's rent. I'm in here, right? And it's a pretty shiny thing. Mm -hmm. And most people like that. But the truth is, you're in a position to do so. When they talk about Grant Cardone, I'm like, yes, 
He doesn't have to own where he lays his head. This man is on jets every day. Yeah. He's using other people's money, it's, OPM. It's a different it's a different to thing. invest. And so his mindset is he doesn't want to own where he lays his head because he's laying his head in every He's not other even state. using his own money to invest. So exactly. it's, a, it's a completely different category. So I hate when people try to bring It's not real life. Bring folks like him into that equation because it's not mm -hmm. realistic. It's not, not the everyday person is gonna do that. First of all, he's not the everyday person, period. Like we all have big goals and high goals. But I'm, I mean, how many of us are going to be billionaires? Let's be clear. And the truth of the matter is, and that's just something that's being honest, it's like a top 1%. Mm -hmm. So if we know uh, the bulk of us are never going to be in that position, why don't you talk to and listen to people that are your peers? Like there's more millionaires than there are billionaires. There are more people that are wealthy. They say now the wealthy people, according to, according to what's going on right now, if you make $400,000 a year, you're considered wealthy, right? Yep. I know way more people making that per year than I know millionaires. Correct. So if the average person looks at buying a home and they're building wealth, then you want to listen to the average person. I don't think we need to go off of these fairy tales and tales and these fantasies because he's a billionaire and he's using other people's money. How many of you guys are going to be able to take a million dollars of other people's money and invest it? We have a hard enough time getting ten thousand dollars of other people's money. That is a hundred percent fact, right? You, know? you can't compare yourself to certain people. Certain people just have a different mentality, different mindset. This conversation is more so for the everyday person exactly. working in nine to five. Maybe you're self-employed, you're an entrepreneur. Maybe you're, you're getting your credit together. You're, you're stacking your bread, whatever it is. I honestly feel like you should go own. And if you don't want to own, if you want to invest, then you should buy a multifamily and live in the multifamily house hack it and live for free that's just my personal opinion or if you're in the state of georgia and there's no multi-family get you a property with a basement i have plenty of clients that are looking for properties that have a basement you can rent out the basement it's the same thing as house hacking and let someone pay the mortgage or pay most of the mortgage while they're staying with you and you live in the other side there's like i said there's so many other ways to approach it mm -hmm. i think what it is is we want to look at home ownership and i hate you know what i hate people say talk, saying, talk to them queen talk let me get, um. let me let me let me let me get comfortable. <laughs> she hate, about to get comfortable with y'all. I hate when y'all go. Like, well, if the bank owned the house, the bank owned the house. So if the bank take your house back, you never owned the house in the first place. Mm -hmm. The difference between you as the renter and the person as a homeowner, I got a real life example from a real life client. She bought her first home using down payment assistance. Um, and she bought it from a builder. It, I think the home might have been, let's just say it was one hundred and sixty-five dollars or $175,000. This was four years ago. This year, she sold that home, made a $100,000 profit, paid all the agent fees, so she made more, plus paid the agent fees, and she used that profit now. This was, she just lived in it. Mm -hmm. She didn't do anything special. She didn't, like, it wasn't like a fix and flip. It was a new construction, beautiful property. She was able to sell it for profit and now her mindset shifted. So she said, Kiana, what I'm going to do, and y'all can go to my page. It was the girl with the pink suit on that clothes. She was like, what I'm about to do, I'm going to sell this house. I'm going to take this hundred thousand. This is the most money she ever had at one time. She used part of it to leverage to get a bank loan. She used another part of it. She opened an event space. She took a couple of classes about opening up an event space. She took another portion of it and now she helps people do business credit and she got business credit. So now, She's able to start over, but she decided to rent this time. And she asked me, Kiana, I'm making 100000 These are my plans to grow these three businesses. I'm going to do this for a year, and I'm going to come back to you in a year and buy a house. Now, I told her that was a smart decision. Well, you couldn't do that if she was renting an apartment, though. No, cause she, exactly. That's my yeah. point. You couldn't, you couldn't have taken time to say, I have to, I've educated myself, and here I am now, three years later, four years later, I've educated myself on building wealth. And I can make a hundred thousand and invest it, leverage it, and she is doing phenomenal. She just opened her event space. Shout out to Jewel Bozeman. She just opened her event space and she posted on social media. She's one of my day one clients. And I say that to say, where else can you live in a place and just pay a mortgage and make a hundred thousand? I will wait and make a hundred thousand in four years. I'll you're, wait. You're not doing that renting. Like here's the that's just the facts, right? Renting does have some benefits, right? It gives you that flexibility. Mm -hmm. When your lease is up, you can be flexible. You can do whatever you got to do, right? It's a benefit. Um, you don't have to worry about the maintenance in the place, right? You, it gives you an opportunity. Maybe. 
Well, depending on where you live. Exactly. Right? Depending on where you live. But in most cases, you don't really have to worry about the maintenance because it's the landlord's responsibility. It gives you the opportunity to stack your money to prepare yourself for home ownership. So there are pros with renting. Um, and I look, for me, like I said earlier, I think if you need a place to stay, there's nothing wrong with renting. But you know what? Nothing you know what? wrong but with But there it. is something wrong with renting if you're going to rent. Like, it's, I feel like you should rent well below where you want your mortgage payment to be. So you should humbly rent. So you don't want to rent the high rise, brand new, $5,000 a month spot. What you want to do is you want to rent something that's well below so you can save. You're not going to be able to save if your rent is just as much as you want to pay your mortgage. Where is the saving? Well, there's no savings. And that, that, bring, that was going to bring me to another point. In most cases, your rent is going to be more expensive than it is to have an actual mortgage. Like once you, like you said, first, last month, security, maybe a broker fee involved in it too, depending on the situation, that's four times your rent. So if you're renting for twenty five hundred dollars a month, that's ten thousand dollars. I mean, that's a down payment on the three hundred thousand dollar home. Exactly. Right. And your mortgage payment, depending on your property tax and insurance, is probably going to be less than twenty five hundred dollars a month. That's it's important. probably going to be around eighteen to two thousand dollars a month. With renting, one of the cons, you don't get no tax benefits. The IRS does not recognize your rent payments. Hold on. At all. You get no. I get no. People always. I want earned income equity. Equity counts. I'm here to say equity. <laughs> the equity but, you, but you do know equity is monopoly money, though. When that equity is monopoly money, uh -huh. but you know what? You cash out when it's time. And everybody that's cashing out this year on their monopoly money, every single one of my sellers is making at least six figures. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. And they can take that same six figures and flip it and turn back around and buy another house and still have money left over. Like, what you don't understand is there's an equity play when it comes to home ownership. Yeah, I mean, there's equity plays, there's tax benefits that yes. come with it, um, there's stability. You know, most people, exactly. you know, if you have children, you have a family, you're in a certain neighborhood, you have the, the better school districts in, in most cases. You have power. You, you have the power. There's power and ownership. And I think what we've done is we've told ourselves that, well, renting is the same thing as, as, as having a mortgage because you don't own it because the bank owns it. And you, what you're doing is you're just tricking yourself out of your spot. I'm going to tell you, you're tricking yourself out of your spot because there is, there is no comparison. Owing the bank some money as leverage on a property that you can refinance, that you can sell for profit, that you have many programs that will protect you is not the same as just renting someone else's asset and helping them pay their property off sooner. Because that's what renters actually do. So when a renter finally figures out, why is this homeowner kicking me out? Or why do they not want me here anymore? Why are they selling? Congratulations, mm -hmm. you paid, the you paid their mortgage over in over abundance for five years. Now they have equity, now they have the rent that you've paid towards their mortgage, and they're going to cash out and make some money. Congratulations, you helped them. You didn't help yourself. Yeah, no, absolutely. I 1,000% agree with that. Um, you, <laughs> like, you can't cash out on your on an apartment. <laughs> Somebody cannot. else. You just can't. And when, like you said, when there's an opportunity to get equity in in the the your house, you you take it. You use. You do, yes. you do what you got to do. There are certain properties, like you have legacy properties that you'll never sell, but mm -hmm. there are certain properties like, this. Hit, if, if I can get this, let it go. Yeah. And get your money out of it. Real estate will always have highs and lows. Right now it's up. It's really high. But rent is up too. Rent is all the rent way is, up. Rent is at all time <laughs> highs right now. All That's why up. when I hear people say this argument, like, oh, I'd rather rent this, that, and third, I'm like, yo, but you're paying a mortgage. Oh, yes. Like, you oh, think yes. you're really saving, but you're really not saving because no. you're paying a mortgage in most cases. Mm -mm. Like, in New York, where I'm from, I mean, rent on a three-bedroom apartment, depending on where you are, is, can be anywhere from 2500 to 10000 depending on your neighborhood, Oof. right? Now, when I say 10000 because I know people in the chat going to be like, yo, well, who's paying 10000 A lot of people. A lot of people, trust me. I'm in Atlanta. There's a lot of people that are paying six thousand, five thousand, four thousand dollars in rent. Like let's be clear, in Atlanta it's considered, humbly speaking, we're considered cheap compared to New York. Mm -hmm. And we still see rental prices at thirty five hundred dollars, four thousand dollars for a single family home with four or five bedrooms. So it's not getting cheaper to rent. It's actually getting more expensive. And it's gonna keep going up. Of course. Rent is everything. Look, the, what you said is up and it's stuck. It's up and it's stuck. <laughs> I said this when we first started. They all was mad at me. They was pissed. It's still up. Yes. Y'all still mad? <laughs>
<laughs> what? It's still, it's still up. Is it still up or not? Yo, you're a fool. <laughs> yo. Damn, man. Are y'all still mad? Are y'all still mad? I want to know. <laughs> the numbers don't lie. I'm not, you know, I'm just chasing the numbers. The numbers are what they are. Look, men lie, women lie, numbers don't. Numbers you you do can not. Google this information for yourself. It's and you And you can see what's happening in the rental market. All landlords are raising their rent, especially now that these oh. moratoriums are ending. Rent's people haven't, haven't paid mortgages in a while. Landlords about to make their money back. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? So, like, look, at the end of the day, do what you got to do, what you think is best for you and your family at the end of the day. But ultimately, especially in the black and brown community, we need to own some shit. I don't care if you're going to rent. If you're going to rent and you have the finances, you have the money, you better be investing. Correct. You, if you're going to rent, you better be investing. And that's what really pisses me off when I speak to people and they say, look, I have the money, I have this, I just don't know what to do, or whatever, right? Or whatever excuse they come up with. It's like, dude, just fucking go buy investment property then. If, buy an investment. If you don't, because there are some people, now I'm going to speak for the, there's like a 1% of people, right? They make the money. They enjoy a certain high-rise living. They enjoy living in a place with all these amenities, and they don't necessarily want to get out of these. Like, there's a specific couple of condos in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people live in them. They can afford to purchase. They choose to live there for the convenience and all this and all this and all that, right? Cool. But you still got to own something. So at least own a secondary property. At least own a rental property. At least own something, look, whether you want to live there or not. I, look. In the Airbnb world that we live in today, oh, it's up. if you guys are not taking advantage of this, especially if you have the capital, yes. you can go buy a second home, right, in Atlanta, in Miami, any place you would like to visit on a regular basis, yes. or you have visited, right, you can do 10% down, go get you a nice spot, and you can Airbnb it and make profit yes. and be smart about why you're renting. And most people are not taking advantage of these opportunities no, out there. They just want to be lifelong tenants. In our community, you know, I said, I said a tweet, uh, well, I posted a tweet probably like a year ago. I think I'm going to repost it. Uh -huh. And I said, in the hood, we don't know about generational wealth. We, we know about passing down um, rent control departments. Mm. That's generational wealth. Oof. And, and with how I grew up. Right. As we passed down rent control. They don't want to let go of that rent control apartment. Listen, I've like, heard about that in New York. See, we don't have that here. Oh, we have heard about that, that. That is like a real thing. That's not no urban legend. That is no so myth. So it's like, listen, you, like, I own it and I can't raise the rent. Basically. Whoa. You can't do nothing. It's rent control. I've heard about that in New and York. It's for dirt, sure. and, it, and it could be dirt cheap depending on when. Your, your, probably your grandmother. Like the grandfather then. <laughs> yeah, like, yo, we had rent control apartments in my family at some point. Wow. Right? And the rent is a lot cheaper. And people pass that down from generation to generation. But that doesn't build wealth. That no. keeps us in a hood mentality. It does. You know what I'm saying? And I think we, in this day and age, where we have, like, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, fine. You didn't have the information. Our parents didn't really know. Right. There was no YouTube. We couldn't do a rant in gyms. There was no earn your leisure. There was none, none of, of, there was none yeah. of these things, right? So the information wasn't readily available to us 20, 30, 40 years ago. But it's I, available to us now. But it's available to us now, and we know better. And you, right? can't, and you can't continue to blame your parents and you, how you grew up and all these circumstances of why you have not built wealth or have, why you haven't made, what you call it, changes mm -hmm. to your mindset. It's really you now. You have too much access. No, it's all it's on It's too you. much access. Everything is on YouTube. Everything is on Google. Everything is on social media. Even if it is not just a step, the step one is there. Now, maybe you may have to buy a class or something for step, t you know, five through ten. Mm -hmm. But step one through five, the basic steps, they're there. A hundred percent. And so to live in a mindset where you rather say, I just, I, you know, you have all these excuses. Think about why. I want us to really take the time to absorb why is it that we have all these excuses. We say we don't want the maintenance of a house. I own houses. What kind of maintenance are y'all talking about? Y'all act like, <laughs> like, like it costs thousands of thousands of dollars to maintain a house. The same way you got to pay all your utilities and all that when you rent. Same it's the thing same the thing. The only difference between us and, and what you guys have going on is, okay, if my hot water heater breaks down, I got to replace it. But guess what I have? It's a thing called a home warranty. Mm. And with my home warranty, I have a complete protection home warranty. So I pay them $900 a year. Mm -hmm. But 
with, if they come to my house, they cannot fix my hot water heater. They replace it at no trip charge cost to me. Yeah. Then there's home warranties that you pay a trip charge to. But again, you may pay like $50 a month, $60 a month, $100 a month. That covers you for someone to come and repair any pieces or e e any broken items in your house. So what type of maintenance? Well, what type of maintenance y'all talking about? Maintenance is definitely real, right? But it, it, they act like it's thousands of dollars. Depends. See, you're, 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 you guys are kind of spoiled down here in the South. I'm going to tell you. <laughs> and I'm going to keep it real. You Southerners are spoiled. Southerners? Yes. You're from North Carolina. I am. I'm you're, a Southerner. You're a Southerner, too. I'll right? take it. I'm a Southerner. <laughs> Shout out to the Southerners. Shout out to the Southerners. <laughs> Cheers. Right? So, you guys are spoiled because y'all, when y'all buy homes out here, the homes are fairly new. Mm -hmm. Y'all don't have a lot of older homes. No, we don't. But in New York, New Jersey, tri-state area... You got homes from fucking 1890. All right, cool. You got homes from 1920. <laughs> These homes are old as dirt. Take it. I'll These take it. These homes are falling apart, literally. <laughs> like, <laughs> like <laughs> literally. And you're going to spend 700, 800,000. And I'm speaking only for New York right now, guys. So don't rip my head off in the comments saying, where are you getting $700,000 homes? Mm -hmm. You need to do work. But in New York, you can buy a half a million, $600,000 home and still have to put two hundred k in to fix it. But that's why y'all make all the money y'all make. Well, that is a fact. That's, that's, why, that's why the cost of living is higher in New York. But y'all, the money y'all make, and the reason I know y'all making some money, because I got a lot of migrators that came down here from New York. <laughs> and let me tell you, my relocation, my relocation clients have spiked through the roof, and most of them come from New York. And y'all can work from home now. And y'all getting these inflated salaries to us, in our opinion, for our average price point. I know someone, one of my clients, making almost $300,000 a year, working as a senior head in HR, moved to Atlanta, still making that same money. She rich. She's rich in Atlanta. You're definitely rich. They bought rich. a five-bedroom home mm -hmm. on an acre of land with a full basement. They are rich. In, but in New York, you know, it makes up it, the it's, difference. It's check to check. Yeah. You know. New York, sometimes the New York salaries, even if you're making six figures, sometimes you still check the check because just... The cost of living. The cost of living, we have, I mean, state taxes are ridiculous. Yes. Like, it's a lot. Property taxes are more expensive in New York. So New York is a different type of animal, and that's why, you know, I'm prefacing, like, New York, like, all right, high-cost areas yes. are a little bit different, but still there's opportunities to still rent. And that's why New York has so many multifamilies, yeah. right? And that's why I, I encourage my New Yorkers, like, look, if you can't buy in New York, move to Jersey if you can. See? Because Jersey is a lot cheaper and you can still get multifamilies and still commute back and forth to work. Like the way they migrate into Atlanta, Folks in New York are migrating to New Jersey. They're migrating to Connecticut because yes. it's a little bit more affordable, and you can get a lot more bang for your buck and still keep that. New people York are salary. tired because you know. Oh, with, with people the are pissed off in New York. They're pissed off, and then think about it. With the pandemic, we didn't see that coming. Mm -hmm. So can you imagine being in a one bedroom and y'all will shut down, down? Like mm -hmm. we, sh you know, Atlanta. We ain't gonna talk about what we did. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to hear it because we know we kind of was still open. But y'all were shut down now. Can you imagine paying 3000 4000 a month just to say I was in Manhattan and you stuck in a one, two bed, one bedroom? I've seen, let me tell you, I was on YouTube. Oh, huh. I watched. This is how much you can afford in Manhattan. I said, oh, I'll never live there. Oh, I, see, I, <laughs> see, when you talk Manhattan in certain parts of Brooklyn, it's just a completely different yeah. animal. But and still, that 900 square foot, 1,000 square foot, for probably, I'm disturbed. But it's probably going to run you $5,000. Let me tell you why. How, I'm so disturbed. When I was when we did our pop-up in New York, mm -hmm. one of the agents showed me their flyer for this house. And I was like, oh, this is a three-bedroom. <laughs> Two baths. A three-bedroom. The, the southern, the southern my, they're spoiled. You a see what I'm saying? Two baths. 1,200 square feet, yes. and they wanted like 1.2 million. That's a big house. 1.2 million. That is a big house. Oh, I said, oh, no wonder my clients come in here. <laughs> Y'all are like, they are disrespectful up there. Well, yeah. But and it wasn't it wasn't brand new. It was no bells and whistles. There's no such there's thing no, as brand new in There's no quartz countertops. It was just like, here's the house. Guys, you see how the Southerners are spoiled, <laughs> <laughs> right? You, you see this shit? <laughs> like quartz countertops, what? They still got Flamica. <laughs> I was like, Y'all are they tripping. Got, we got wood walls and, and, and pink tiles. So and I shit. do so I do see that the cost is up, but I can imagine if that's what you're charging me, if I when I go to YouTube and watch what I can afford in New York mm -hmm. and if I'm gonna pay you three thousand, two thousand a month, nine hundred square feet and I'm renting it, 
I'm not building no equity. I can never do nothing with it. This is just, it just doesn't make any logical sense, to, mm -hmm. in my opinion. It, look, when you map it out side by side, and if you weigh out all the pros and cons, and again, we're not talking to the people who have an investor mindset first, that just want to use their capital yeah. and invest, because those people are still owning. But, they, but guess what? The ones that have the investor's mindset, they're not staying in a shiny, brand new apartment. No, no, They're no. actually in the one that's like $1,200 a month. It's yeah. small. It don't need nothing They're new. sacrificing. They're sacrificing yeah. to invest, whether they're investing in uh, real estate, REITs. They can invest in REITs, investing yeah. in stocks. But they're using it. I had a client did that. She, her first property she purchased was a duplex. And she was still renting. And she bought it in um, Grove, Grove Park. It's a growing area in Atlanta. Now it's completely grown up. And she bought a duplex, and that was her first property. She said, "I'm gonna rent first. I'm gonna I'm gonna buy and have two tenants." Mm -hmm. That's that's smart if that works for your financial plan. But at least she owns something in her portfolio. I'm talking about lifetime renters. Yeah, we got to get out this lifetime renting mentality. Right. And and that's what you know. And let's circle back to Investfest, right? Oh yeah! Shout, oh, shout out to Investfest we, and everybody. Shout out to what's his name? Um, Julian Gordon, right? Oh, Ju Julie, hold on. <laughs> Let's just take I, it. Winnie, I, I'm <laughs> tell you, Ju Julian. Yo, Julian, if y'all me, if y'all saw me on stage, if you saw my face, I was shocked. I was just as shocked as y'all. I'm sorry if you was offended. I was too. Like I was like, Whoa. you was offended by that? I was like, it, it wasn't offended. It, it just it, it made my heart flutter. It's the way he said it. You clutch your like, pearls? I was like, huh? Oh. <laughs> like, say, say what he said. Say what he said. Yo, your man Julian. Shout out to Julian Gordon, right? I rock with Julian Gordon. I think Julian Gordon is a great guy. I rock with him too, right? but he still said what he said. But he said what he said and he meant it with his chest, though. Say it. Say what he, he said. He said, if you are renting, you are homeless. But what got no, me... Uh -uh. If... You are renting, you are homeless. He said that in front of 4,000 people. In front of 4,000 people. And proceeded people. to give y'all a poem and a speech about why you're a homeless person. <laughs> I was done. <laughs> he, gave, he gave a speech and a poem about why you're a homeless person, but how he can help you eventually. But he can't help you if you're, if you're, if you're stuck on wanting to be homeless. Oh, my God, it was yo. The, it was the most profound. <laughs> yeah. I was I think I know I was on stage. I had to get out of it. Like I was like, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> yo, I'm not gonna hold y'all up. If you watch the clip on my Instagram page, yo, my that's my natural reaction. I say, yo, what? They are homeless, bro? Like I could not believe what I was hearing at that moment. Every, I think everybody's eyes was like. And then when he said, "Stand up and repeat after me," I am homeless. I say, oh my god, this dude is a savage. <laughs> but, time. but. <laughs> With all that being said, if you listen to everything else that he said, it was right. It was a hundred percent facts, and I think so. Like, there's a whole debate. If you go to my Instagram page, MG the Mortgage Guy, and go to that post, you'll see it. It says, "If you rent, you're homeless." Right? As the headline, I think so many people are just stuck on the headline, and it offended a lot of people. Oh, oh! First of all, I was reading the comments. Y'all was reading. I, I, I don't want to like everybody. The comments fighting. was going crazy. And the only thing, the, the biggest thing I read was, I don't want the financial responsibility of buying. I said, oh, well, maintaining a, a house, especially okay, our southerners, mm -hmm. maintaining a home is not as that expensive. So y'all just making up excuses because you want to choose to rent because renting is comfortable. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. That's all it is. And people are comfortable, but in the comments, you know. I said people are not listening to what he's saying. No. Because people are stuck on like he said, make him stand up and say that you're homeless. <laughs> he did. I'm like, he, he did. did. They stood up too. They it was two thousand people who stood up and said, I am homeless. And I think they realized when they said that, like, what the hell am I saying? They did though. But then he said, manifest that you are not going to renew your lease when your lease ends and that you're going to make it a priority yes. to purchase real estate, specifically a multifamily. That's what I was about to say. His multifamily year 2022. Movement. He has a and huge multifamily. And I feel like this, if you're in a state that, and I'm the reason I, y'all, let me just say, I love multifamily, but because we don't have any, it is so difficult to get someone in there. So we have to be creative and say, well, you can't get multifamily, but you can get a house on the basement. We got to get a little more creative in it because our state just doesn't support the multifamily movement. But the mindset behind the multifamily movement is very exciting 
because that mindset says, listen, with this multifamily movement, you're going to make sure there's somebody in another part of your home, whether they're in the basement, whether you're like Doug Depp, come out as somebody in every single yeah. room. Somebody and other people are going to be paying the bulk of your mortgage so mm -hmm. you can live essentially mortgage free and allow them to pay it off. So we do have to have some renters out here. But like, have you remember on um, mm -hmm. Baby Boy? There's like you got the people that are um, you got the sellers yeah. and you got the buyers, right? Yep. So you got the consumers. So the people that are out here consuming all the stuff, you got the people that's selling it. Now, I don't know about y'all, but I'd rather be the person that's selling. I'd, I'd rather be selling it. Because this dope sell itself. It's, yes. it ain't nothing but good ain't dope, sells, good itself. dope sells itself. That is a fact. Than to be the consumer. No, that's, my, I, that's how I feel. And I agree. And everybody doesn't have that mentality, unfortunately. And I think that what Julian was trying to say is like, look, first of all, people buy courses. They go to mentorships. They go to rod, real estate ride-alongs. They go to workshops. They go to Zoom calls. They go to seminars. They go to Invest Fest. They go to all of these different places. And they learn about real estate. And they never execute. Mm -hmm. Right. And what Julian was trying to do was force the audience to make a commitment of ownership. Correct. Because one one important thing that he said, and I don't think people really paid attention to, he said, if we're going to close the wealth gap in our community, we can't have a renter's mentality. No, we real not. estate. We all know um, is one of the biggest wealth builders in our economy. Right. Mm -hmm. So if. 2,000 people, I think the example he gave was 2,000 people in this room paying $1,000 a month on average, that's $24 million a year in rent going to somebody else's wealth. Yes. Not, and then nine times out of 10, it's not a black or brown person that it's gonna go to, right? More likely. So you're giving away the wealth and you cannot, you cannot close a wealth gap in America if we have this, if rent everybody rent. wants to rent, and if everybody wants to and rent, I'm gonna tell you, it, it takes a lot, and I'm, you know, I like to speak from experience. It takes a lot for you to shift from that mindset. I don't like my family. I don't like the family house, like the, you know, that family legacy house. Mm -hmm. That's gonna be my house, because we didn't grow up owning real estate. I'm glad all you're talking my about this. All my family rented Section Eight. I still got family that's taking advantage of Section Eight and still renting. And the one thing about it is shifting your mindset to know that it's an investment takes a huge shift. So let's start there. You got to shift your mindset. Mm -hmm. The second thing is when you touch that first real estate check, remember last year, last year I ended up selling one of my investment properties, right? The HOA told me I could no longer rent and they've been watching my house and they started giving me fines. And mm. I couldn't control it, which is why I do not advocate for you to get a rental in a community with an HOA, specifically a townhome. But we'll talk about that later. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I'm going to sell this property. I'm going to buy something else. I sold it, held on to the money. And eventually, that's when I bought this house this year in mm -hmm. Brookhaven. So I bought another property. And even though I put more money down, the projections from this, I could not imagine renting. I couldn't imagine because now I own it. I got equity when I bought it. I put my money as a vehicle. I look at real estate now as a vehicle to build wealth. I sold it, that property. It absolutely property. is. I made money from it being a rental. I made over six figures when I sold it. Took those same six figures, purchased a bigger property that's going to bring me in so much money on these air. This Airbnb projections got me so excited. I'm, I've been in Home Goods every day. <laughs> I've been on Wayfair buying whatever they said is in stock. I bought it. If it if it matches the color, because you know furniture is hard to find. But I say that to say. You have to shift your mind to understand it's an investment. See, we want immediate gratification. I could have just had my money sitting in the bank account. I have my money now in a wealth generating vehicle, which is property. It's tangible. I can touch it. I can make money off of it. Shift your mindset. Stop thinking that like it, it takes a lot to say I'm putting down 50,000 on this house. I'm wasting my money. No, you're putting $50,000 into an investment vehicle that you will get returns on. Especially if you get with a right, the right agent, the right zip code, the right property in the right area with the right growth. That's so, what's important. So check this out, though. Javon Blue in the YouTube comments. Shout out to Javon Blue. Thank you for watching. He says your house is not an asset. Biggest lie in American history. What do you have to say to that? I feel like he, he must not own anything. Oof. You must not own anything because my house is an asset. If I walked in with equity, 
the last house I sold, I made $110,000 at that closing. Tell me where else you can do that. So he says an asset brings money into your household yes. and a liability takes money out of it. Simple. Sounds a lot like Grant Cardone, if you ask me. It's, it's, he sounds, sounds like, like he's reading from the Grant Cardone he said, playbook. He's reading from the Grant Cardone playbook, but my asset, my property actually brings me in money. Okay. Because I just talked about an investment property that I'm going to make close to $25,000 a month on by utilizing Airbnb, Gigster, and Peerspace. So who said that my property ain't going to make me no money again? So let's do this in the chat, in the chat right now, right? <laughs> Say what? In the chat right now, do you guys think buying a primary residence is an asset or a liability? Let's take, a, like, I want to hear you guys' opinion in the comments. You know, it, and it has to be an asset, and I'm going to tell you why it's an asset. Because if I cannot buy a primary home, mm -hmm. I can just live inside somebody's rental and pay them $2,000 a month, right? Mm -hmm. So $2,000 a month times 12, what's that, $24,000? Correct. All right. Or I could take that same money, mm -hmm. live in a house that I own, apply it to the principal, so you can, you're going to get money on principal, you're going to pay money on interest. So let's say double that down with the interest. Let's say you're probably going to have about seven, let's just say, mm -hmm. depending on where you are, 12000 of that go towards principal, right? Mm -hmm. I'm still winning because if it goes towards my principal, now at least I got 12000 equity coming out of my property as opposed to you. You just threw $24,000 down the drain. Mm. How is it not an asset? Well, Let's run, run me the numbers. I just want to see your mindset. Well, look, I'm looking at the YouTube comments right now, and a lot of people are saying asset, asset, asset. There's a couple people saying liability. You know, Javon Blue obviously said liability. You know what I'm saying? But a lot of folks in here are saying it's an it's, asset. But the ones that said it's a liability, I, so if you don't own where you live, what do you own? And I, and I, and I'm, I want to call you out on that because... See, Grant Cardone may not own where he lives, but he owns real estate. He owns apartments. So you renting an apartment, you own nothing. What are you going to do to use? How are you going to use any of these tools as a wealth building vehicle? Look, I think I'm serious. I think people got to start with this whole follow the leader crap. Yes. Like stop reading from the playbooks. And, you know, and this is Rich Dad, Poor Dad, great book. They spoke oh about my God. this. Yes. You know, the Grant Cardone's in the world. I, I hear what they're saying, but it, look, again, I'm always boiled down to in the black and brown community. It doesn't apply. It doesn't apply. I'm it sorry. Apply. It does not apply because. And because we say it, they, they, it's like we're not being a hater. It does not apply. Because what it doesn't do you apply own? to us. Do to you me, own a business? Do does, you own some it, stock? Nine times out of ten, they don't what own do a you business. Own? They don't own no stock. And you just, they don't you're own just, no real you're estate. Just, you're just blurting out stuff but when you, you look at that anything. though real talk and when people get so blinded by this he don't want you to own because he needs you to be a tenant That's, oh, oh, we, he needs you to be a tenant he and needs look, you to be a tenant <laughs> i own multi-family properties i love my tenants right it's the game for everybody me. can't be an owner great but he's not pushing ownership you know what I'm saying? Because he and wants you to rent those apartments that he he's getting the money from. Rent. He getting other people money to buy these big apartments. And he need you, you, and you, and you that are convinced that renting is better than owning to rent those inflated prices. Because he has the, he, he's given them projections. And those projections include rent increases. Those projections include overpriced apartments so you can help him pay back his investors so he can get rich. So who's losing here? Look, so for the folks, like, look, apartment viewing says... It is a liability because you are not bringing anything in from it. If you rent it out, it's an asset. You still pay mortgage and taxes. If you do not pay it, it's gone. So what do you do when you're renting? So renting is a liability too. Because we say because it's a bigger liability. It's a bigger liability because you can pay it and I can still kick you out my stuff. It's mine. You can be paying me on time and I can say yeah. Anyway, then here goes the 60-day notice. I'm gonna need you to get up out my house. Bye. So right. how is that going to, like, and that's tr the truth. Mm -hmm. It's a fact. Nobody reads the fine print. You're talking to an ex-property manager here, and I didn't manage small apartments either. Yeah. Ja so I know. Jacob, Jacob Chavez says, GC um, does own where he lives. He just bought a mansion in Golden Beach. Okay, great. Right? At some point, everybody's going to buy a house to live in. Exactly. Like, you see the wealthiest people in the world. They're buying 50, 60, 70 million dollar homes. They want to have a legacy home. They want to own. You, every, at some, and look. The black and none of that shit applies in my opinion in the black and brown. Look candidate. at people like Rockefeller, like these huge, like the real, real wealthy. They pass these properties down through generations. So if you have this mindset and legacy properties, exactly. So if you have this mindset, right, you have no legacy property. You believed in only owning investments. You have nothing to pass down. What are you true? How are you building wealth? Like, what are you passing down? What are you doing? Well, I want to know. 
I agree with that. And look, if we're talking generational wealth, right, especially in our community, how do you expect to have generational wealth if you're not investing and you're renting? Because we're not. You're not. It's a, it's, a, it's a fancy term. It's so fancy to it say. It sounds good. It sounds good. It's but, very clickbait but, it, but I'm going to tell you this. It's scary to do. I'm in the process of doing it. It's scary to do. Buckling down, disciplining, getting investing. It's scary to do. It's hard to do. It's easier to say, I'm building generational wealth. You making money every day is not building generational wealth. I'm sorry to say that. It's not. You investing money into a vehicle that's going to appreciate compound interest is your friend. All right. Equity is your friend. That's in property. That's in stock. That's in um, looking at life and life insurance policies. All these things, those are wealth generating vehicles. But if you're just so gun ho on where I leave is not an asset. OK, I'm going to tell you this. I'd rather be an owner any day. And if I fall into hard times right now, according to the appraisals on my properties, I'm be able to walk away with a check and start over. 100%. Now, y'all, if you're renting and you fall on hard times, we're just going to have to fall on somebody else's couch because you can't sell that asset to make any money. Well, I can tell you this. Out of all the multimillionaires that I know, 95% of them own real estate. Absolutely. And will always own. Out of most of the broke people I know, none of them own real estate. Nope. They have opinions, though. They ha Oh, they have opinions. <laughs> Everybody has an opinion. But let's just call a spade a spade. When you look at the demographics of the people you know in your circle, just look in your own circle. The people who, get, who really get into it, who are successful, they all own. Oh, absolutely. They're, they're all owning. They own it. Like, and, and bigger than that, they continue to own. Like, I, I've had clients, they, like, refuse. Like, I know we're only going to be here for two years, or we're coming to Atlanta for a project for two or three years, but Kiana, put me in a place that has value. And I was like, do you want to rent? We don't rent in my family. Like, their mindset, they grew up not renting. They, renting is like the devil to them. Oh, we don't rent. Just put me somewhere that's going to appreciate in value. I mean, I'm, they, they walk into it. They buy houses like people rent apartments. Mm -hmm. Because their mindset is so different, like they refuse to rent. Renting, is they're allergic to it. Like, what? Rent? No. I don't care if I'm only going to be here for two years. I'm buying it. It's mine. No, 100%. And we got to change our mindset to think like that so we can start building. And look, everybody, I need y'all to stop what y'all doing. Go like the video. Share this with your community. We got almost 1,000 people in here live with us. Make sure you like this. Oh, that's what's up. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I can't, I ain't even lie. I'm going to go off of you. You, just yeah. tell, you tell me what they said. <laughs> you going to go in? I'm gonna go, you tell me what they said, and then I'll just comment. But yeah. That's, that's let's, good, though. Let's get these likes up. We got three people who disliked it, but, you know, maybe they don't like what we're saying. Who knows, right? Yeah. It's always a hater in the room. It's going to always be a hater. If you don't got no haters, you yeah, ain't popping. Yeah, you ain't popping. <laughs> you ain't popping. Shout out to y'all who disliked the video. I appreciate we you. We appreciate y'all for tuning in. <laughs> Thank you very much. We're going to sip this nice cab on y'all. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Let's see what the comments are saying, right? Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Oh, it's just Libra said, what about the 2008 if it was ready to, I don't know. That's a, I don't I know. Think, I know she's what she's trying to say. She's just, nah, she, I think she was responding to somebody else. But what you think she was trying to say? Uh, was she talking about 2008 when the market crashed? Has to be. I think that she was trying to talk about that. That's such a tricky conversation because it's not going to happen like that again. It was mortgage fraud. It was all these things. But let's forget that the market crashed on people that got predatory lending in 2008. And let's think about the people that nah, came nah, nah, up and hold on, rich. hold on, hold on. You ain't going to put it all on us. All right. All right. Predatory don't, hold lending on. and mortgage fraud. No, if, don't put it all on us. All right. But okay. These buyers was out here doing doing the Didn't most. Did you hear what I said? Okay. Predatory lending and mortgage fraud. That's all it was. Make sure you say the buyers though. Predatory lending. <laughs> <laughs> buyers committing mortgage fraud, buyers also yes. being greedy. Because you could do and first bankers and, being greedy and too. You could do first and second mortgages <laughs> at the same time and pull out money. So all of it just kind of together. But everybody likes to talk about who lost. Nobody wants to talk about all the people who won. You know who won? Mm -hmm. Not the people that was renting. The people who won are the people that had the capital to go buy all these distressed properties, build their portfolios, and wait for the equity to build and get you, you and you, to rent them. Mm -hmm. And then they waited 10 years. Now it's like, wait a minute, that house, I bought it for 150 in 2008. Now it's worth 500,000. Yeah, here's your 60 day notice. I'm gonna need you to get up out my house. I'm about to make me 400,000. Let's talk about those people because people that own actually win, period. Yeah, look, it's no secret. The market's been up in stock for like five years right now. 
I would like for it. I, and I'm gonna be honest. I'm I'm stressed. I done lost three offers. <laughs> <laughs> you, you want the market to crash? <laughs> I, don't, I don't want the market to crash. <laughs> you want? <but> <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna keep it honest with y'all. I'm tired of it being up and stuck. I wanted to just kind of calm down a little bit, but it's not. And I'm just dealing with it, you know. But it's, <laughs> this up and stuck is so real. It's getting realer and realer every single day. And um, the prices keep going up every single day. We see people getting outpriced every single day, especially in Atlanta. You got people paying above asking, losing offers. It's a lot happening that you guys don't want to pay attention to. And you want to wait because you're like, well, eventually the price is going to go down. But I encourage you, even if you don't want to buy a house, the area you're interested in, whatever state you're in, go to Realtor.com, go to Zillow, go to Trulia. Just get yourself on some type of alerts and just watch and see what's happening. And I promise you, you'll see the house is just going up. Mm -hmm. and going up and the way that the market is and way that the way that inflation works is when they decide that this is the new price it doesn't go down and so people always say well it's going to go down look at new york right mm -hmm. so do you think i'm going to ever be able to get a brownstone like the cosby show for two hundred thousand like they Hell were back no. in the day never again wait a minute no the opportunity uh, what down. goes up must go down that shit ain't never hit no 200k ever again in life do you understand life. now do you guys see my point Certain things that go up stay up. Certain things go up and go down, but I'm never going to be able to get the Cosby Show Brown song for 250000 Those are million-dollar-plus properties now. 100%, and I love what Troy Martin just said, right? He says, those who owned and kept their properties won in 2008. You only lose when you sell. That is a big gem. Everybody put a gem in the comments for Troy Martin. That is one of the gems of of the day in these comments because it's just like stock and options when it's red days if you sell you took a loss exactly but if you didn't sell on the red days then you didn't take no and loss a lot of people you should be buying more and let me say something a lot of people still aren't selling those assets they're refinancing and pulling and out pulling money the to, equity buy more out to buy more because now they have equity so it's it's just so many plays i just think we have to shift our mindset it's no judgment if you want to like if you're renting because you have to Mm -hmm. But I know people that are renting because, not because they have to, not because they don't have the money, but because it's prettier to rent. Because what they, what they can afford to buy doesn't give them the look they want. Mm -hmm. So they'd rather just spend their money on a luxury high rise than actually just buy something and own something and start building towards something. No, that's a fact. All right, so we got another good comment in here. Princess Lamore 1985 says, are y'all going to talk about the thousands in caps with like 17 S's at the end of renters getting evicted this year? Let me speak on that real quick. They just... <laughs> Let me speak on that. I'll be quiet. <laughs> Look, I do not feel bad for anybody. I repeat, I do not feel bad for anybody who is manipulating the damn system. That part. If you have a job and you are going to work and you are making your money whatever it is, you have an obligation to pay your rent. Agreed. I do not, I have a tenant, I have several tenants that I'm paying, but one of my property managers sent me a picture of the garbage the other day in one of my houses. <laughs> Don't tell me it was Gucci bags in there. No, it was, it was filthy as hell because the garbage was just overflowing like filth. But what do we see? A brand new 70 inch TV and a rabbit cage. These mother effers brought a rabbit <laughs> and a new TV and haven't paid me rent since I purchased this house. I can't house. read. <laughs> and they work every day and they live like filth. I, do n I cannot wait to evict these people, right? Because they are manipulating the system. I have no sympathy for that. I have no sympathy for nobody who is manipulating the system. Now, happening. if you were affected by COVID, you lost your employment, loss of life, et cetera, et cetera, I, I have sympathy for you. I feel like you deserve the help. You should get the help, et cetera, et cetera. But there's thousands. Say it again. Thousands with the caps you just had in S's in the comments. Thousands that are manipulating the system. How the hell you go buy a rabbit and you ain't paying rent? <laughs> Let me tell you can, something. Can, can somebody explain this I to me in the you comments? This, you go buy a goddamn rabbit. And people like to say, what about the thousands of people that are getting evicted? If you owned your stuff, because when the government decided that they were going to help people out and bail them out when COVID happened, guess who they bailed out first? Owners, business owners, property owners. We are the ones that got bailed out first. You renting, you know why you didn't receive any relief? The only relief, the only relief that you received was the relief that were kind of supposed to kind of trickle down from the owners. 
So they told owners, well, you don't have to pay your mortgage. And so then they kind of trickled it down. But now you guys are going to have to get evicted. But the people that own their properties still own their properties. And so you have to be mindful. Anything in this world is set up to benefit people who own. Why would you not want to own? Why do you want to be a renter for life? Well, what is it about that that's attractive? Here's a good, here's a good, just one based off what you just said. Simpson Williams family says, our communities do not know what longevity means. It's all about fast money. I have two rentals. I own my own home. My rentals pay all my bills. These properties would go to my daughter via a trust. Oh, we just talked about that, but we got to wait. Shout out, shout out shout, to Simpson shout Williams out family. To Simpson. We got a whole episode coming. When we is can't that even talk on it, but that is that, coming soon. That, is, that episode is going to be crazy. and About trust and the, estate about planning. About trust and estate planning, and you're doing the right thing. Shout out to Simpson Williams family. Even, like, you know, this year I've been focused more on, like, fast money is fast, but that passive income, I used to always feel like passive income is passive. It ain't that fast. And it's a lot, but it's not as much as earned income. Because you can get out here and earn it, right? But you know why passive income is important because eventually you're going to stop wanting to earn it. Eventually you're going, your body will slow down, your mind will slow down. You can't run the way you used to run. Mm -hmm. So that's why you have to have assets and vehicles to put your money into that's going to bring you a passive income so you can passively decide that at this phase of my life, I'm going to slow down and I'm okay with that. But the people that continuously run and run and run and run is because they're making earned income. Earned income is made fast and it's spent fast. Have you ever heard fast money get spent fast too? That's a fact. Put your money into a, a vehicle that's going to be the long term. That's property. That is, that's real estate. That's assets. That's stocks. Like, I'm sorry. Like, I'm telling y'all the truth because I didn't think about this in my 20s. And my twins, I thought I was going to be able to work forever. I'm going to move forever. I'm getting a little seasoned and I am tired. I don't want to keep moving around forever. Seasoned? I don't want to. Seasoned. Oh, okay. we, don't, we call it seasoned. It's a better okay. way to say it. Okay. I'm seasoned. I like that. And I don't want to run as much. I can't do as much. I'd rather invest in more property and invest in more people that can bring me in a passive income because I'd rather a percentage of something than trying to keep everything running around. And that's why real estate to me is so important in owning more real estate and owning more REITs and owning more stocks so I can have a passive income. So so let's go to this comment because I know we're we coming up on time and I got to go to this one because this was heavy in my comments on that Julian Gordon post. Sherlock Holmes, what a, what a name. What a name. Um, Sherlock Holmes says, if you're paying property taxes, do you really own it? The moment you miss some payments consecutively, they'll take it from you with the shrug emoji. What do you have to say about that? Taxes, there's two things that are guaranteed in life. Mm -hmm. You're gonna pay taxes and you're gonna die. That's a fact. So why are we having this conversation? Like paying taxes? I think taxes, it's a stupid ass it's conversation. A, it's, it's, it's so Honestly. stupid. It's so, it's, 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 a, it's again, that's your passive aggressive way to keep yourself <laughs> uneducated about the quality and importance of ownership and just coming oh. up with stuff because they're not gonna take your property right away anyway. That in our state, when you don't pay your taxes, you're, you're educate home, them. You're, when, in our state, I can buy your property at a tax sale, but guess what? When I buy your property at a tax sale, I don't technically own it for 13 months. You got 12 months in a month. You got a year in a month to buy your taxes out and pay it back. I still can't automatically keep your property. Not in this state. Now, there are some states that turn over a little bit quicker, mm -hmm. but I can tell you this. Taxes are, you're going to always have to pay taxes. But I'm not going to always have to rent. And if I wanted to and I owned an asset, I could actually get a mortgage against my property, second mortgage, pull out an equity line of credit and pay my taxes and pay a low monthly payment. Then I could quickly just be a renter and just allow someone else to be in charge of my life, to be in charge of where I'm going to go. That right there is just a passive aggressive way. You obviously don't want to be educated on owning anything. What do you own? Well, you know, in the comments, <laughs> I agree with you first first and foremost in my comment section they were going crazy well if you technically um have a mortgage you don't own your home you rent to the bank like come on i read the rent to the bank because guess what the bank got money give, the give, bank has first money of all, <laughs> give, me, give me give me give me a fucking break with that argument. exactly i hear what you're saying but come on it's two different things i took out a loan which is a mortgage and i used the house that i purchased with my down payment, my decent credit, and my job, you know what I mean? And I leveraged that to get a loan, and I purchased a home. Yes, technically, if I don't pay, they can foreclose 
Correct. And get back the, in, the investment. But if you don't pay your rent, you can get evicted. And I can guarantee you, look, certain states are tenant friendly versus landlord yes. friendly, right? Like New York is the worst. We ain't going to talk about New York. But in, certain, in a lot of states out here, especially these red states, they will kick you out in 31 days. That's Georgia. Georgia will kick you. No, Georgia, North Carolina North will Carolina, kick you out. Yes. At least North Carolina, they padlock. Georgia, they put your things on the curb. The most inhumane thing that I watched and I witnessed when I was a property manager was when we filed evictions and they would come out, you never knew when, the, when they would come out. So you have to have a sheriff present to serve the writ of possession. Let me tell you, let me just educate y'all real quick. When you file eviction, they file, they file for the writ of possession. You go, through the, you go through the legal process and now you get the approved writ of possession. Now me as the owner have the approved writ of possession. In the state of Georgia, all I need is for the sheriff to be present while I'll allow anybody I found to take your items and put them on the curb and change the locks. That is out how inhumane it is here. And we kicked out four people on Christmas Eve. I remember this in 2014. Mm -hmm. And I could not believe it. It was so, like, I filed the eviction, yes. I'm managing the apartment community, yes. But the people that were getting kicked out, you know what they were, we were actually putting on the curb? Gifts. Mm -hmm. Because instead of them paying their rent, they wanted to buy gifts for their family. And again, I really, it's a change of our mindsets. Our mindsets are not are not right. And yes, there were more brown and black people. Those were the ones that were getting kicked out. Because in our mind, we always just feel like something's more important. And what's a roof over our head is more important than anything. That's a fact. T Troy Martin just said, P property taxes is paying rent to the county to own your home there. Please stop it. There's... Y'all gotta stop with this foolishness. Like, <laughs> give me a break. They, like, I, come on. Anyone that like, says that, I just like, what do you it, own? It, it just, it doesn't every, make any listen, sense. Every time they make a comment, <laughs> like, so what, what do you own? Do you it, own? What it's do like you they're own? trying to find a reason to like bash ownership. <laughs> what do you own? Like, well, you still gotta pay the taxes. Well, duh, we I all gotta pay taxes. That. You still pay your taxes Look, now as a Big renter. said more money, more problems. That's what Big said. I'll, I'll take those problems. I'll take those problems. I don't, I'll take I don't the ownership want, problems. I want the ownership problems too. I don't want the I'll pay the county to the day I die. You it's want your mine. tax money? Great. Here. But you know what? When I die, I can put this in my, tr it's in my trust and it's going to pass to my heirs. When you die, that, that apartment ain't going to your heirs. It's done. It's done. It's over. You, you're not up and stuck. <laughs> uh, <laughs> now that's right. That's true. <laughs> you're not up and stuck. I'm sorry. Look, we are running out of time right now. So let's end this. Wish, wish, wish. You want to do a rant in the gym? I want to say, let me. Okay, let me give you my rant. My rant about the whole renting versus owning is, y'all have to stop with the BS that you're feeding yourself to say that ownership is not better. Ownership is always better. That is why you got the owners of the store and you got the workers of the store. That's why you have the owner of the building and you have the renter of the building. Owners trump renters every single day. Don't tell yourself any different. You're lying to yourself if you tell yourself that you're in a better position by renting or by not owning anything. Own your name, own your stuff, own something. Mm -hmm. And the gem I want to drop is educate yourself. Humble yourself enough to educate yourself and reverse the mindset that you received if your family never owned and you've never seen anybody build any generational wealth. What's going on is you've never seen it happen. And so in your mind, you just want to buck the myth because you're uneducated. The more educated you are, the more educated decisions you can make, and you'll understand that we are right. Owning is better, period. I agree with that. My rant is simple. Do whatever works best for you. Very simple. If you want to own, great. If you want to rent, great. But if you're going to rent and you're not going to own investment properties, please understand you are doing, your ancestors are turning over in their grave. You are making, you are not making them proud. Our ancestors fought for our right to right. own some shit. They tried everything in their power to stop us from having the same even playing field. Correct. And this is why the wealth gap is so wide in America today, in 2021. So ultimately, you got to really think about this. Everything that the gurus say, the GCs, the rich dad, poor dads, all I get all of that, right? But none of that stuff applies in our community, in my opinion, because these folks did not have to go through what our ancestors went through just to even eat in restaurants and to go to schools and things of that nature. So you guys have to understand. Agreed. If you are not going to use your time as a renter smart, 
and invest, if you just want to sit here and play a silly game, then you are doing yourself a tremendous disservice. You're doing your, the people who came before you a tremendous disservice by not taking your time to own some shit. Now, my gem is, all of y'all need to go to Apple, okay, and rate Rants and Gems five stars, <laughs> okay? Y'all need to subscribe. Y'all need to like it. Listen to it on audio because that's the only way we're going to make Rants and Gems the number one real estate podcast in the world. If you guys, we appreciate all the support. We appreciate your follows on Instagram. We appreciate you tuning in today on EYL Network. But you guys have to go to the audio outlets as well. Listen to it on podcasts. Rate it five stars. Leave reviews. And that's how we're going to move the algorithms. Here on on YouTube, like, comment, share, subscribe. Send it to your people. Um, coming up at, at 8 o'clock tonight, we have um, the Stock Market Blueprint with Francis Quay and Ian Dumlat. It's going to be amazing. So tune in tonight, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, tonight, Stock Market Conversations. All right, peace.